during a period when the people of Israel were very isolated from the nations around them. They loved themselves and they hated everyone else. The earliest Jewish scholars, the Talmudic tradition, understood the story of Jonah to be a folk tale, a satire, but tells an essential truth that God loves everyone. It's only 48 verses long. So listen to the story of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. And the Lord said to Jonah, go to the people of Nineveh, for I have seen their great wickedness, and tell them to repent, or I will destroy their city. But Jonah ran from the Lord. Instead of going towards Nineveh, he went down to the sea city of Joppa, and there found a ship going towards Tarshish, a city on the southern coast of Spain, in the opposite direction. And he paid his fare and got on the boat and began to sail away from the Lord. And God caused a great storm to arise. And the sailors feared for their ship and for their lives. They threw all for the ship, their cargo. They each offered prayers to their own gods. But Jonah went down into the ship and fell fast asleep. The captain of the ship went down to Jonah and woke him and said, Do you not care whether we live or die? Pray to your God that we may be saved. And Jonah told the captain and the sailors what he had done. And the people said, what is your name? Who are your people? Where are you from? Who is your God? And Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. From the land that God gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And my God, Yahweh, is the one who created the earth and the seas. And the sailors threw lots to see who should be sacrificed to appease the gods. And the lot fell on Jonah. And the sailors tried to row towards land, but could not reach it. And so the sailors made a sacrifice to Yahweh and said, forgive us if we kill an innocent man. And Jonah said, throw me overboard, for it's better that I die than that all of you die. And at that, the sailors threw Jonah into the sea. Vince Airy can't see this, but Vince, we have a shark in our sanctuary this morning. <laughs> and the great fish, the Leviathan, swallowed Jonah whole. 
And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And while he was there, he prayed to the Lord. And this is Jonah's prayer. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and the Lord answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help. And you, Lord Yahweh, listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet, I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Yahweh, my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good, I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and the fish spit Jonah up on the dry land from the very place he had begun his journey away from God. A second time, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to Nineveh, for I have seen their wickedness. And so Jonah went to Nineveh. Nineveh was such a city, it took three full days to see the city. On the first day, having been in the city, Jonah preached one of the shortest sermons in the Bible. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. That's it. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh listened to Jonah. They covered themselves with sackcloth and with ashes and asked the Lord for forgiveness. And when the Lord reached the king of Nineveh, what Jonah had said and what his people had done, the king took off his royal robes, covered him with sackcloth, covered himself with ashes, and made a decree from the king and the royal household that all people and all animals in Nineveh should repent that the Lord may be gracious to them and forgive them. And when the Lord saw what the people of Nineveh had done, the Lord repented of destroying the city. And Jonah was angry. And Jonah said to the Lord, Is this not what I said to you before I began this journey? That you are gracious, slow to anger, abounding with steadfast love. And you have relented from destroying the city of Nineveh. And in his anger, Jonah went out from the city, east of the city, and sat down to watch what God would do to Nineveh. And the sun was hot. And God blew a strong east wind. And Jonah built for himself a small shelter to shade him from the sun. And then at evening, God caused a vine to grow up that covered the shelter to give him comfort. And in the morning, God caused a small worm to come and eat the plant, and the plant died and withered. 
And again, Jonah was angry at the Lord for taking away his shade. And the Lord said to Jonah, you are angry that I killed the vine, that you neither planted nor watered nor nurtured, that gave you shade. Should I not care so much for the 120,000 people who live in Nineveh and all their animals and all their herds? That's the story of Jonah. We in this congregation are blessed and chosen people. We know that we are God's children. We are know that we are people for whom God has bestowed upon us blessings upon blessings. But there are in our community 30, 40, 50 percent of the people who have no faith community who do not know that they are loved by God. Throughout the year, especially this fall, we'll be inviting them to come to visit us at church. Some of them may look a little different from us. Some may sit in our pew. Some may speak with a little bit different accent. But all of us are God's children. Should we not care about them as much as our own comfort. Jonah, it's just a folk tale, just a short little book out of the Bible that speaks a truth that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love for us and for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen.